too, so they didn't give us a proper ending to the sketch. So, you know what? I'm just going to uh, talk to the audience for a minute. Uh, hi, I'm really sorry. I'd like to apologize. On behalf of Second City this week, we all thought the world was going to end, so we didn't bother to rehearse. We didn't bother to prepare. And Ron West is in Tijuana. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know what to tell you. I, I'd, I'd offer to give you your money back, but let's face it, most of you didn't pay to get in here in the first place. <laughs> Unless you consider blowjobs currency. <laughs> And for those of you that did pay to get in, you know, you know, shiny new televisions don't pay for themselves. <laughs> I mean, at least we, now we can watch, we can watch Two and a Half Men and the Maury Povich show in style. Hey, uh, George, George, I've got an idea. Why don't I just play a song for the audience? Oh, Sweet. great. Music, the great appeaser. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Nichols. <laughs> it's the end of the world as we know it. It's the end of the world as we know it. Well, actually, not until October 21st. <laughs> it's the end of the world as we know Play it. Play Bird, Bird, sign! And I feel fine. <laughs> What a week it was. The rapture occurred today at May 21st at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. So to those of you who are in the audience, let me just say shalom. If you thought losing three Republican presidential candidates in 72 hours was tough, wait till you see what becomes of their congressional majority on Monday. Donald Trump announced that he was not going to run for president this week. The decision was reached after consultations with his main political advisors, Meatloaf and Gary Busey. <laughs> Newt Gingrich had a rainbow-colored glitter thrown at him by a gay rights activist, leaving him feeling surprised, shaken up, and slightly fabulous. <laughs> Rip Taylor is still at large. Longtime proponent of personal responsibility, Newt Gingrich blamed the liberal media for his controversial remarks about the Paul Ryan budget proposal. Way to take responsibility, Newt. 
Dominique Strauss-Kahn, now former head of the International Monetary Fund, allegedly sexually assaulted a West African woman in a New York hotel room. It seems that after screwing the third world figuratively for so many years, he apparently decided to do so literally. <laughs> Speaking of sexual harassment, we take you now to a rare non-matrix broadcast by the AMC network. Oh, and Racha? Looking good. <laughs> Josh. Hey, Carl. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good Mr. See. Tart, would you like me to stay and take notes? Of course I would, but that won't be necessary. I don't know why you keep getting such fine secretaries and they got me stuck with old wands. <laughs> oh, well, that's the bonuses of having your name on the wall. <laughs> Cigarette? Yeah. Ah, oh, thank you. So tell me about this Newport Cool account. Oh, well, uh... <laughs> As you may know, uh, Newport Cools is one of our biggest clients and, uh, honestly, we're facing a little bit of trouble. They're, uh, they're getting antsy about us moving into new markets. What new markets? Well, they want to know if... <laughs> if white people smoke. <laughs> if white people smoke. I know. Now you've seen some of the predicament that I'm getting into here, Carl. I mean, it's not like I... I just don't have any white friends. It's really strange. It's not that I don't like them, Carl. I think they're fine. It's just that... I never interact with them. I got an idea. Uh, Rashna, could you come in here for a second? You wanted me, Mr. Tart? Oh, no. Rashna, do you have any white friends? White friends? <laughs> Mr. Tart, you know that a respectable, unmarried woman like myself couldn't be seen running around town with white people. <laughs> but there is Mr. Smith, Smitty Smith. <laughs> well, he was a copywriter over at Sterling Cooper Draper Price, a whitey advertising firm, <laughs> until he got fired. What did he get the can for? I heard sexual harassment. Hmm. Hmm. You can take the white out of the marshmallow, and he's and he's here now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, he's just outside. He wants to apply for a job. <laughs> Actually, I might have a position open for him. Uh, Josh, that'll be all for today. All right. Hey, uh, why don't we get out of here? <laughs> mm. So, uh, how are you doing, sir? Uh, very well, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you catch the, uh, the ball game? This weekend, I know how much you people love your baseball. <laughs> oh, no, sorry, I actually missed that one. I guess. <laughs> Smitty, yes, sir. Do white people smoke? Yes, they do, <laughs> sir. They do. <laughs> Surely you don't think that I believe you're the representative for your entire race. Do you, Smitty? No, sir. That, that would be racist, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you don't think that I'm a racist, do you, Smitty? Oh, no, 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 sir, no. Anyone who would hire me after being fired over at Sterling Cooper is it's not a racist, sir. Very good. Third floor, Smitty. Oh, yes, third floor, sir. Third floor! <laughs> <laughs>
Trump Entrepreneurial Institute via web conference. Class of 2011, there is one key secret to me being a $6 billion heir, being worth $20 billion, being worth $13, or whatever I feel like I'm worth today. And that is, whatever you do, see it through. What you start, you must finish. By the way, I'm not running for president like I started. <laughs> From the firm of Cutler, Gleason, and Shaw, Smitty Smith to NYU's School of Advertising. And in closing, class of 2011, remember, five parts gin, one part vermouth. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, don't ever, ever sleep with your secretary. <laughs> it does not end well. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we are just moments away from May 21st, the Day of Judgment, as predicted by some guy somewhere. I have made peace with everyone in my life in preparation, with the exception of my parents, because that would have been too much work. I have shed all my earthly belongings, including my children. I have quickly accomplished everything I've ever wanted to do in my life. Suffice it to say, I am now wanted in 13 states. I'm gay. <laughs> All right, well, now that we've shared what will certainly be our final repentance, let us join hands as we welcome the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Give it a minute. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's not uh, quite midnight on the West Coast yet, so. <clears throat> Was that it? <laughs> no, I just had something in my throat. You guys, you guys know I was kidding about the gay thing, right? Yeah, right. You and Don Lemon. <laughs> Welcome back, Anderson Cooper 360. I'd like to uh, welcome my guest and CNN correspondent, Don Lemon. Don? I just want to say, uh, very courageous, very courageous for coming out. Oh, uh, thank you, Anderson. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure if you know this, but... Uh, uh, you know, I was never really hiding my sexual preference from my colleagues, but mm -hmm. I thought, you know, I'm coming out with a, an autobiography called Transparent. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well come out to the public, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, I don't know if you know this, but Rick Welts actually this week came out, the CEO and president of the Phoenix Suns. Mm. So, uh, you know, as some may say, the, uh, the time is right. <laughs> yes, no, I, I, I would say, I would say you are a brave soul, being an Afri African-American male, saying you're homosexual, and, and braver still because you're a celebrity. Thank you. Yes. No, I, think, I think the nation is getting past the point where uh, being gay is a hindrance on your celebrity. Mm. You know, in mm -hmm. fact, some might say it's even better for you. <laughs> <laughs> saying that you are now, in fact, an uh, open homosexual. Right. And, and, you know, will, will my sexual preference uh, do well for my book? Yes. And, and my correspondence? Yes. I mean, it certainly isn't holding back Rachel Maddow. Well, uh, for a small <laughs> niche like MSNBC, I understand that. But, uh, <laughs> I just, I don't think America maybe is ready for, a, you know, a gay Walter Cronkite. And do you see yourself as Walter Cronkite? <laughs> <laughs> well, duh. Only as in I'm, I'm, I'm a trusted man in news, but I, I wouldn't dare compare myself to Walter Cronkite. Right, whether he was gay or straight, kind of a thing. Right. Maybe just move on from the other closet thing. Maybe Absolutely. Get past yes. that for a while. Yes. <laughs> um, I definitely wanted to uh, to compliment you. Okay. On, okay. Um, your amazing hair. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I see what you're doing. I see. Now that you're out, you're you're comfortable with complimenting the looks <laughs> well, on there. Well, no, yeah. I think I think that uh, it's but, silly that a lot of straight men will compliment other men on their looks because they're afraid of seeming gay. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm, now that mm-hmm. that's out of the, out of the question, I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> um, I think it's it's great for you to know and for America to know that I think you have amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And a movie star is Okay, us. okay, stop, stop, stop. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing, okay? I just, I wanted to do this on my own terms and, and my own timeline, but I hear the whispers in the office and I see the little rumors on the internet and I just, America, fucking shit. I'm not gay, okay? I'm not gay, goddammit. Yes, yes. I do have perfectly coiffed hair and, and beautiful blue eyes and, and six pack you could bounce a quarter off of. And yes, maybe I do wax and Botox. Do you know how hard it is to stay beautiful like this? Do you? No, you don't, okay? And no. You haven't seen me with a woman out in public. Do you know why? It's hard to find one as attractive as me. I do not date. I do not date out of my pedigree. Thank you very much. I just need to say that. Wow. Yes. Jeez, Anderson, you seem a lot less attractive now. <laughs> like I'd be attracted to you if I were gay. I'm not! I'm not gay! <laughs> Yes, Don Lemon claims that he was born gay. His mother's obstetrician concurs, saying Lemon came out of the womb with jazz hands. (laughs) Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, who made headlines attacking unions, is now trying to take away hospital visitation rights from gay couples. This guy won't be able to go to any parades for like the rest of his life. Osama bin Laden's personal files revealed that he wanted to use the oil industry to destabilize the world's economy. BP quickly pointed out that they totally had that idea first. (laughs) President Obama told Israel that you can never truly have peace with a permanent occupation. And the United States should know. We've had troops in Iraq for eight years, in Afghanistan for 10 years, in Korea for 61 years, and in Germany since the end of World War fucking II. Tom Cruise was one of the many stars who came by Oprah's last episode to say goodbye. Cruise said that he's really going to miss that couch. (laughs) Speaking of overinflated celebrity egos, we take you now to a rare non-Days of Our Lives broadcast by the NBC Daytime Network. Today on Lori, baby daddies acting like babies. We're bringing the deadbeat dads in here, and we're bringing them to justice. Say hello to LaRonda. Hi. <laughs> LaRonda says that he's the father. He says no way. Isn't that right, LaRonda? That's right, Lord. That's right. I know it. I know. You know he don't call. He don't come home. He out in the clubs. He don't pay no bills. But that his baby, Maury, that his son. All right. Well, let's meet the son, everybody. Please welcome Conan. Hey. Ah! 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 Alright, everybody, chill! Chill, get your ass to Mars! Hey, my boy, you know who I am? Ah, oh, you're that guy from TV! Hey, would you like to be a farmer? He's too angry! Oh my god! Why would you do that? Oh, if it bleeds, we kill it! <laughs> I think it ruptures my scrotum! It's not a tumor! Can we cut? No? Okay, just let, let's just bring out the bottle, huh? You don't know me. You shut up, Lorando. Babe! Ow! I ain't no baby daddy, Maury. All right. <laughs> hey. All right, Arnold. Now, Lorando here says you're the father. Hi. What do you say? It's not true, Maury. It can't be. You don't know her. Last week, she was sleeping around with some guy named George Cariotis. Hey. No! Fuck you, asshole! So you're, you're telling us, Arnold, that this is not your son. Yeah. <laughs> Right here. 
Now the results of that paternity test, Arnold. <laughs> Arnold, you are the father. Oh, you contaminated. <laughs> That's not all, folks. That is not all. Get this, Arnold. You are also the mother. Impossible. That is the veto. That is the baby. Uh, this is 
heaven, I'm pretty sure you will find someone better than your Justin Bieber. Like, like Justin Bieber's brother? So, something like that. No. That's hot. Which means you follow me. Wait, there are like four of us. Oh, you're not supposed to be here. I cast you out! No! <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. She was a slut anyway. Yeah, she was. Those four 14 year old girls survived the May 21st rapture. <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides hit theaters on Friday and the reviews are in. Johnny Depp and Penelope Cruz have about as much chemistry as a Kentucky Bible College. <laughs> Next April, James Cameron's Titanic will be re-released to commemorate the centennial of the sinking of the ocean liner. Cameron came up with the idea after he stumbled upon a few rooms in his mansion that were not filled with stacks of money. Pro wrestler Randy Macho Man Savage passed away yesterday from injuries sustained in a car crash. He's body slamming Jesus now. Hey. What, too soon? <laughs> After the rapture or the death of Macho Man? Which, I just want to be clear. ABC canceled Brothers and Sisters, a local West Virginia affiliate is bringing it back as a reality show about newlyweds. Former Two Live Crew rapper Luther Campbell is running for mayor of Miami. His campaign slogan will be, Me so horny, for your vote! <laughs> Speaking of celebrities doing stuff, we take you now to a rare, non-Charlie Sheen broadcast of Two and a Half Men. <laughs> sitting there with the TV off. You feeling okay? Are you upset that Uncle Charlie had to go to the hospital for <laughs> exhaustion for an indeterminate length of time? <laughs> no, I was just wondering who was going to replace him in this bewitched, Roseanne, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air sitcom situation. <laughs> what are you talking about? I wonder who that could be. <laughs> Look, Jen, it's your cousin Ashton. What? <laughs> what? This is like Brady Bunch or Family Ties, where the unexplained younger family member shows up to boost the ratings. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Cousin Ashton's here, man. I may be klutzy, but I'm kind of lovable. <laughs> Show, okay? Your character is a klutz, not a dumbass. Just say the lines as written. All right. All right. From Ashton's line, please. And action. Uh, I bring in great storylines, like who broke the base and why is my my car at the bottom of the pool? And, oh, check that out, John. What? Oh, oh God! God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. What is that? What is happening to me? From the bill. From the Cut! Cut! Of your N 
TV shows, okay? You're not getting paid to make celebrities cry, okay? Just say the lines right so, so I can get back to washing Chuck Lorre's Escalade. Sorry. All right, from Ashton's line, please. Sorry. And action. Uh, I bring storylines like, who broke the vase? And why is my car at the bottom of the pool? And yo, who's got my red check? <laughs> oh, look, it's Berta. Oh, whoa, hey. <laughs> How old are you? 50. Oh my God, marry me! God. <laughs> show that the witness has identified IMF Chief Dominic Strauss-Kahn. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the events that took place on Saturday, May 14th? Yes, I went to clean a room at the Sofitel Hotel, where I work in Manhattan. The defendant emerged from the bathroom in a state of undress, Take and your time. he began explaining the role of the International Monetary Fund. <laughs> Please go on. So he said the IMF's primary role has been to correct macroeconomic imbalance and to encourage countries to make the necessary revisions to sustain economic growth. <laughs> and how did you respond? He said I just wanted to clean the room. <laughs> You have no interest in economics, yet he assaulted you with the sheer tedium of it. <laughs> yes, he insisted on explaining the laws of supply and demand. <laughs> Can you tell us how long this went on? Just a few minutes, but it seemed like hours. <laughs>
Diplomatic immunity. <laughs> it's just been revoked. <laughs> 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 High school students nationwide are putting the finishing touches on their duct tape suits and dresses for the 12th annual Stuck at Prom Scholarship Competition. Not to be outdone, cement manufacturer Ramco created their own prom outfit competition. Let's join a Ramco cement sponsored prom already in progress. Looks like those students will have a hard time getting home. <laughs> Their prom theme was sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> Thought I got plastered at my prom. <laughs> I could keep going. In an effort to foster novel and creative ideas to engage the public, the Center for Disease Control has released a guide to surviving a zombie apocalypse. They're also creating guides for alien encounters, Godzilla attack, and a Ron Paul victory. <laughs> An Israeli couple named their baby after their favorite Facebook feature, Like. You'd think they'd have learned their lesson by now, commented older siblings MySpace Evite and Friendster. <laughs> Kenyan Olympic marathon champion Sammy Wenjuru died Monday in a fall from a balcony. Jumpers from the U.S. and Germany followed, finishing second and third. Some Californians are complaining that lifeguards are earning as much as $200,000 per year. The union denied the allegation, saying that pension plans don't cover singing careers in Germany, hepatitis C treatments, or brief marriages to Kid Rock. <laughs> this week, North Carolina saw the arrests of several elderly people distributing vials of crack near the ocean, or seniors selling seashells by the seashore. <laughs> Ironically, they were selling crack to pay for their prescription drugs. In financial news, the United States government reached its debt ceiling early Monday of $14.3 trillion. If the Congress and Senate don't vote to increase the spending limit by August 2nd, the government could default on its interest payments, plunging the world into financial chaos. If the debt ceiling issue doesn't make sense to you, we at Second City this week have created a helpful metaphor. Still confused? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Here's another metaphor. Uh, this suit used to fit me so well. Yep, you're gonna need a bigger suit. Can't I just lose weight? Nope, you're definitely gonna need a bigger suit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a complicated issue, very hard to grasp. Let's have one more metaphor. That'll be 850, ma'am. Here's my credit card. It looks as if you have maxed out your credit. You need to increase your credit limit. Can I just spend less? No. You need to increase your credit limit. <laughs> Still, <laughs> scratching. <laughs> Still scratching your head? <laughs> Here's one more metaphor. Actually, uh, George, the writers are out of metaphors. They are done. We gotta hire new writers. Can we just end the bit early? No, 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 no. You have to hire new writers. <laughs> And there you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Elevator, open the door. It's Barack Obama. <laughs> we need to talk about the debt Mr. President, there's nothing to talk about unless you're willing to put the defunding of Medicare and Planned Parenthood on the table. Nope. <laughs> we'll just go around in circles. Oh, God, they're calling you too, huh? Every minute. I'll just let it go to voicemail. Hey, you're an awesome. You reach John and Debbie. You 
you know what to do at the beep. Yeah, hey, John, uh, this is like the 10th time I called you. Yeah, no Can kidding. you pick up your phone? If you're a real man, you'd do it. You can't keep running away from your debt for forever. Hey, you listen to me, buddy, okay? This this is harassment, all right? And it's really starting to get to me, so oh, stop please. it. Oh, please, no more with the crying. I've had it up to here with all of that, and frankly, I just don't believe it. Why? Well, I don't like it anymore. I don't like your tone. What did he say? You don't like my tone? Well, I don't like you owing my client $14 trillion. Now, what are you going to do about paying it? He wants to know what we're going to do about the debt. Tell him you got something cooking on the stove. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm right in the middle of something. I'll call oh, you back oh, later. You're right in the middle. You can't take care of it. You weren't worried about racking it up because you couldn't pay it before, huh? Okay, okay. I just did. John, I've got something. Uh, lunch is ready. <laughs> it's getting cold. Uh, you know what? Uh, my wife is cooking lunch oh, over no, here. Don't you hang up on me. I do no, I just. Uh, uh, talk to you later. Uh, Thanks. Okay, bye. That's, that's fine for now, but we gotta come up with a permanent solution. We can't just keep doing this. Yeah. Who can we get to give us money? We have to get somebody that we can take money from them now and pay the bills with it and then pay it back later. Like, uh, <laughs> like uh, using one credit card to pay off another credit card. Yeah. Yes, but who can we get money from that won't upset the Democrats and the Republicans? It's pretty hard with special interests on both sides. But who has the least say and the least Political power. The, the middle, middle class! class. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Five hundred and thirteen Mexican immigrants were found standing, lying, and clinging to the ceiling in two trucks bound for the U.S. Human rights activists were outraged at the photos, while L.A. Metro rail riders thought that two new cars had been added to the red line. <laughs> A Pennsylvania woman is going to trial for serving margarine laced with marijuana to a 12-year-old girl. When asked why she did it, the woman replied, because I was out of brownie mix. <laughs> in a recent article, the Detroit Free Press wrote that 47% of adults in Detroit are functionally illiterate. At least they don't have to read about the bad news. <laughs> did you know that spell check in Microsoft Word can correctly spell Schwarzenegger? No, no joke there, just information. <laughs> Slightly disturbing information. A children's book titled Go the Fuck to Sleep <laughs> has skyrocketed to number two on Amazon's bestseller list. True story. The complete top ten list is as follows. Number ten, Good Night Moon. Number nine, Time to Go to Bed, Fred. Number eight, Seriously, Close Your Eyes. Number seven, You Don't Want Me to Come In There. Number six, for real, knock the shit off and go to bed or a boogeyman will eat your friggin' eyes. <laughs> Number five, I'm sorry you were born, you're getting a beating. <laughs> Number four, murder suicide stories. Number three, Dr. Phil's guide to better parenting. Number two, go the fuck to sleep. And number one, mommy's a bastard factory. This week saw the penultimate voyage of NASA's space shuttle program. With only one flight left, some scientists are jockeying for their last opportunity to conduct an experiment aboard a space shuttle. Guys, guys, please listen up. Look, Endeavor has a limited payload, so I can only allow one of your experiments to go up. I would like to do a study on the effects of zero gravity on the male reproductive organs during autoerotic activities. In he space. wants to jerk off in space. <laughs> <laughs> Mom wants to jerk off in space. Oh, please, <laughs> please, please! You are two distinguished members of the scientific community. Look, I'm Dr. Tesla, what have you got planned? <clears throat> My mom wants to go into space. Jerk off. <laughs> Big ass dick. It's quiet! <laughs> we want to study the effects of zero gravity on osteoporosis and other diseases affecting the aging community, as well as reduce bone mineral, de mineral density. A bone that mineral density. Ah! I will punch you in the pussy! <laughs> Look, I know the stakes are high. This is the last shuttle to be sent up and you all want to see your experiments get up there, but we've got to stop acting like children. Dr. Bohr, what, what have you got? Okay, 
I would like to separate the Endeavor crew by gender to help establish the existence and the taxonomy of what we are currently referring to as Mobilivirus cuticus. Okay. Um, I'm familiar with the genus Mobilivirus, but I'm not familiar with the species cuticus. Okay, so we haven't yet established the existence of cuticus per se. Neil, are you talking about cooties? <laughs> yes? <laughs> you want to use a $1.7 billion vehicle which cost $450 million for its last trip to study cooties? Yes. What is wrong with you people? Aren't any scientists still doing science? Oh, doctor, nobody wants to fund any research in this economy. You know, we're still reaping the effects of George Bush's attack on science in general. The only thing the, Bo the Bush administration wanted to do was to send moms into space. I just don't think he liked his mom very much because he didn't have a fund for a return shuttle. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys just left her up there? Well, See, the second part of the experiment was uh, the effects of uh, solo re-entry um, into the atmosphere on bone dense mineral. Get out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that leaves jerking it and cooties. We'll go with jerking it. <laughs> <laughs> Again. But I can't help but wonder what becomes of those who have taken the occasion just a little too seriously. <laughs> I saw the sign on Fairfax that said the judgment day was right around the corner on the 21st of May. And so I went down to the church and gave my life savings away. The only problem is the 21st was yesterday. Now what the fuck do I do? If I was counting on this, I went to work in the dude and told my boss that I quit. I dyed my pubic hair blue. Convinced my wife I was gay. And it's not even true. I just got carried away. All the drugs that I took. What do I tell my friends? I went on Facebook and told them how I felt. And all of this for no reason. What else am I to say? This is the biggest freak tease since Y2K. <laughs> Now don't misunderstand, I am not so naive that I trust the advice of every billboard that I read. But when you take a look around, it's easy to believe that the end is coming soon in accordance with prophecy. There was that quake in Sendai, and all those plugs in the south. Those birds just fell from the sky. Yeah, what was that all about? Beefy boys in the oceans, and the economy crashed. And I don't know if you know it, but our president's black! It's a funny topic, or so everyone thought. Been lying shot in the head, the IMF guy got caught. But somehow we're still here, and so is everyone else. I guess we'll have to prepare for 2012. I guess we'll have to prepare for 2012. We'll all surely die in 2012. Yeah. <laughs>